All right, welcome back to another episode of Art Time, where today we're going to be working on the next landscape drawing of Criteria. Um, I don't think I did the one for the desiccated deserts. I don't think any of you have seen that, or maybe I forgot to link it. I probably forgot to link it, but I don't think I did. But regardless, if you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a like and subscribe for more. I'm just going to check real quick. If I did do it, it should be pretty close by. No, I didn't. All right, cool. Anyways, we're working on the mezzanine patches, the jungles that you see all the way in the back. And uh, that's a problem. I didn't even notice this mushroom in the way. You know what? Actually, get the fuck out of here, mushroom. There. Easy. <laughs> Ow, and the bush tubes. Fuck, how the hell did I... Uh, Problems occur. These are things that occur when there are so many freaking... You, you saw how many things that happened here, right? A lot of copy and paste and a lot of layers moved where they need to move to. So there's probably a, a decent amount of things here that are just a little bit out of place, but it's fine. Yep. If you didn't see, or at least go to the... Um, what do you call it when I drew the uh, desiccated deserts? Here it is. Finished product right there for you. Where are the, with the creatures here, a giant freaking spider in the distance. That is giant, by the way. I forgot the size that it is, but it is giant. As it are these things here, and this giant snake, and this giant huntsman shark spider combo over here. A lot of giant insectoids in that area. Compared to what we have here in the mezzanine patches, which is the lower sections of the jungle. We only have four creatures that I drew in the book here. The book of which that I had made long ago. So there isn't a whole lot here. Yeah, it's not like a whole, whole lot. But, uh, yeah, anyways. So, this is a rep. Tillion with two L's. I don't know why. I don't know how old I was. Was I like 16 or something? Whenever the hell I made this entire series here, I don't know why that high school version of me decided to call it a reptilian with two L's because it's basically just reptilian. But you know what? That's fine. It's reptile people, lizard people, living in the jungles. And that was basically the premise. I'm still going to call them reptilians. We've got so many freaking creatures with some strange names in this, on this planet. So having one called a reptilian isn't going to harm anything. Um, yeah, so I don't know what I was talking about. Except the... F okay, so I have been watching Boom Dogs for pretty much... Like, re-watching because I... I think I've seen almost every episode except for season four. I think season four was like way later down the line when I didn't even realize that there was a fourth season until like at one point where I saw a new episode. But then, you know, I didn't, don't really remember too much with it because I was young. And I gotta say, the fourth season is definitely... I only went through three episodes far, but it's definitely something. And I can't exactly pinpoint what... Is something that just feels off, especially the second episode. Assuming it's supposed to be the second episode, I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's supposed to be. The second episode of the fourth season, Good Times. Something definitely does feel a bit off with that, and not to state the obvious on the reasons why it feels off. Just feels like something the character wouldn't have done, you know? So, I don't know. I'm going to stick with it, obviously. We're already in for a penny and out for a pound. But I get the Funkalicious feeling that this is probably... Oh, that's why you were in a place you weren't supposed to be, because you were here once before. Because so I made you too big accidentally, so then I decided to move you forward so that you wouldn't be too ginormous. Uh, anyways... Yeah, as I was saying, I don't think it's going to end up in any way like, you know, the end of Adventure Time than the end of regular show where the end just got even better and 
better and you just wanted to like see what would happen next. I feel like this one, I, th there is apparently another stink meaner episode, so I'm kind of looking forward to that. I just don't know how they're going to take it. it. Maybe it says something about the Clone Wars, that's what the title said, so maybe the stink meaner somehow managed to create a freaking clones of himself. Which, you know, sure, why not? He came back as a ghost once. I'm sure he can go on ahead and create clones of himself. Any more of that character is good. Unless they somehow entirely missed the point. I don't know, we'll see what happens. It's only ten episodes, and I'm like seven left, so... <clears throat> yep. Yes, indeed. Indubitably. Anything else? I don't know. Alright, we are getting close to finishing off the main story, at least, of Tales of Asaria. There's still a bunch of side missions, and there's probably, like, the EXE dungeon, as well as maybe, like, farming up some gear equipment to get better gear than gold to get the ability to upgrade said gear. So, yeah. There's still at least a, a few good things left that we have to do there. I don't know how much longer it'll be, though, before we reach the end of the series. Like, there is the EX dungeons and whatnot that unlocks once you beat the main story. After having done all of the um, side stuff, we'll probably then go on over to the main story. Or, to the... Yeah, the, the final boss which um, you won't see until next week. So yeah, I can say this. I'm hoping I can get this posted tonight. Like, there's a lot to shade and a lot to texture. There's a lot to do here. <laughs> I want to try to get done with these lizard people first. So that's what we're going to try to do, at least. But anyways, yeah. We're getting close to the end of the main story, but we probably won't do the main story fully yet until after we've done all the side contents and leveled up a bunch in terms of equipment, not in terms of actual levels, because it doesn't seem like the levels do that much outside of just giving us a little bit more of an edge. A tiny edge. Especially now, I think we got every character's arts unlocked, and if we haven't, well, it's a character that we don't use anyways. I know Rokuro's maxed out, and I think Velvet's and Mogulu's is maxed out as well. Eleanor I have used once before in the past. And I do am curious, having actually finally learned how to fully properly play the game, if I'd be able to go in and wreck face as her. Because we did pretty good not knowing how to do the basic stuff playing as Eleanor. If I were to go in and then just press R2 to send the enemy in the air and try to figure out what the hell kind of move I need to do next to, um actually make use of the throw in the air instance. And that would be great. With Velvid, so much easier to get her combo attacks up, combo hits, you know, the whole, you gotta get eight um, arts used with the soul breaks counting as one of them in order to do, like, the BG4 move. With Velvet, it's pretty easy. With Rokuro, it's even easier. Hell, even with Mogulu, it's pretty easy because it doesn't get used. If that's fine. You just extend your combo, and then you can use your um, B4 ability. Your second break soul ability. <clears throat> Isen's a bit more of a pain because he requires the enemy to be stunned, but I guess if you have everybody attacking, and if somebody got stunned or knocked down, then you can press the button and then, boom, continue the abilities. And I don't use Lafayette. Set. I feel like I might be able to properly use him now, but I feel like I should just stick to Rokuro and maybe on occasion switch to other characters, see how I can get used to their playstyle like towards the end of the game. Which is kind of pointless because we're towards the end of the game. 
Although I'd say it probably would be a good practice, at least to some extent, to try to get used to other characters' play styles for when... And I'm not sure when exactly, but at some point when I decide to go on ahead and do Tales of Zestaria playthrough. And from which I have read, apparently the combat is not like what Basaria is. Apparently it's more strategic and less combo-oriented. Like, I, I don't know, maybe, um... I don't know what the combat, like, setup actually looks like. All I know is that apparently it's different from Basaria. <clears throat> but we'll... I don't know when we'll figure that out. I would say, because after Season 6 of Minecraft and Season 2 of Terraria, we'll probably try to get a Raft series going. Now, assuming that, because my computer on normal struggles to run Raft, so I can't imagine it's going to have any fun trying to run both Raft and OBS on admin mode. Because you have to run it on admin mode if your computer can't handle shit in order to make sure that the recording actually freaking records and doesn't go, Oh, encoder overload, I can't do this, it's too much. <clears throat> Which is making me... Because I do also want to go back into Sonic Frontiers from the start on hard mode and try out the new content, because the new content's out now. And I have an, I, a better idea on how most of the game looks and what most of the things go, so I could definitely make a much better thumbnail instead of just Sonic in the air with an R to C cat hanging onto him. Like maybe Sonic and Friends with Eggman and Sage included. Uh, spoilers for Sonic Frontiers. Um, I guess good for Sage form. The one that's not like wearing a black cloak with red eyes, but rather a white cloak with blue eyes, that form. And they're all gathered around a campfire, surrounded by, you know, the star bit things, whatever those were called, flying down in the sky. You can see them in the background, a night sky, with some robots just roaming in the distance. But you, you just see them, you know, together in around the campfire, just smelting s'mores. Cooking s'mores. <sighs> Brain. Brain dabblage. But yeah, and then we'll probably also add the ROTC cat in just because, I don't know, probably like sitting in between Sonic's lap as, you know, the cat holds on to a s'more stick and Sonic does the same thing while paying the cat's head. I don't know what the ROTC cats would be considered in Sonic's universe. They're probably not in the same vein as the Flickies and all the other mini-animals, but they're definitely not in the same vein as Mobians. Mainly because you've seen what the cats look like with their paws. Literally just look like little blobs. As opposed to Sonic characters whose hands are normal human hands, but apparently canonically they have blob feet, which doesn't make any sense. Paws would make more sense. And with Rouge, I feel like she would work best with human feet because she is literally 90% human and 10% bat. If there's any character in the Sonic universe that should have human feet, it has to be Rouge. She's the only character that I can really see that could have that without it looking weird. Because she's like freaking 90% skin regardless. The only fur she has is the fur on her head. And the only other aspects that she has that's animal-like is her tail and her wings and ears. But the head counts towards that count, so, you know, the, head, the fur on the head counts towards that. You know what I mean. But I could definitely see the other characters having paws. Like, there's a few instances that I can think of with characters who have their blob feet shown in sandals. Big, three little cat paws, or the cat, maybe even have little claws going off of it. Kind of like, you know, just, just small claws, because cats have claws, right, cat? You got claws? You got multiple claws. I forgot how many claws you have on each paw. Seven? I, I don't remember. You have the one that's where your thumb would be, then you got the two extra... 
the fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, seven. You got seven claws. Big only got the the three. Or he's not, he's got none. Matter of fact, he doesn't have any. But if he were to have actual paws in the um, the sandals department, then the, the hands, I guess, would probably still... That's a good question. If you were to go on ahead and try to give them quote-unquote human hands, but wanted to, like, have it be more paw-oriented to match the paws and the feet, or the back paws, I guess we would probably call them, would he, A, have three... Fingers, Family Guy fingers, regular cartoon fingers, whatever, don't matter. Or would he just have normal paw? But how would we, would he hold, well, no cats, some cats do have thumbs. You got thumbs. What if Big was a pterodactyl cat? <clears throat> Same thing applies with Amy. I think we've seen her with the sandals one time. And I don't know of any other character we've seen with... Oh, T-Cow. Can't forget about her. Even though I'm sure the... Uh, how does that speak go? The Ender's pay probably would not like her existence in any form, shape, in anything that's not in their creation department. Yeah, it's hard to speak. The fuck was his name again? The Mentalist from Dr. Stone. What was his name again? G... G... Something with a G... Uh... I'm gonna look it up. Mentalist... What's his name? Jen. Gen. Gen or Jen? I think it's Gen. Pretty sure it's Gen. It has three forms, multiple forms. The freaking troll face, you know, scrunch, wrinkled, where he's, his face is defined as he tries to be scary and intimidating. Or the literal femboy form, not even fe literal, dressing up as a woman and has the voice vocal cords to act like it. And this show is like, you're a little too tall for the be a convincing woman. What do you mean, a little too tall? Jesus Christ, bro. Skin freaking... I forgot. Jen... Jen's freaking 19, correct? I believe. Yes, 19. Wood. And that one arc where they were trying to get the girls in that... Okay, spoilers, obviously. Season 3 Spoilers. The arc that they're trying to get them into this village that somehow managed to utilize petrification as a weaponry while they try to go get pl uh, platinum. Wood. Definitely wood. Ohaku 16, so wouldn't. Until 18, then wood. I mean, say what you will, there is a, a limit. Alright? If you don't go for that limit, then you're going to get a, a date from Chris Hansen. He might be old, he might be semi-retired? I don't recall. But by George, he'll get ya. He will get ya. So, please keep to the fucking legal limits, broski. But again there, whew, man, man. Don't know why I'm using, well, yeah, man. What was his name again, I I Ichio? The, the man guy. Although, I don't know. is He's definitely bi, at least. Showing interest in Urz and I think a few men? Well, didn't he almost flash Rogue at one point? Not almost flash. He had a freaking thong on. If you don't remember that episode, it's a, the, the one where Froge is trying to find his way home and somehow, spoilers, ends up in a different guild towards the end of the episode. Poor cat thing just keep getting lost. Is that right, cat? The frog cat? Cat frog. Cat frog. Cat frog. Yeah, that's a, that's a song. Um, What were we talking about before this? 
I can't quite... Oh, yeah, but we're talking about uh, Ender's Pay. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to speak like Yen so that, you know, that could be talking about somebody else. Ender Pay. It's a new thing in Minecraft you can do. You can pay Endermen. Oh, God. How cool would that be if you could pay Endermen to build something for you? I don't know what you would need to give them to build something. Like, I don't know how you this, a system like that would work, but... Pay an Enderman to... Cut, ooh! Perfect! You go on ahead, place, like, a very specific block type. And you have, like... Okay, so there's two blocks. There are corner blocks and uh, the starting block. And the starting block is placed depending on where you face. The starting block has to be inside of the, um, what'd you call it? The corner blocks. In a three-dimensional space. To which then you can go on ahead, place a, uh, maybe not a star, I guess, um, maybe don't call it a starter block. Call it a copy block. You go on ahead, place the copy block right there in that one area that you want to put it in. And it places where it faces. Then you go on ahead, take your, I guess, workplace block, whatever the hell the name would be for it, facing where you want it to face. And um, you go on ahead, find an enderman. Give it a certain material. I don't know what material you would give it. I'm sure it would probably be a new material. The Enderman sees it. If the Enderman is close to your block, it will then start to build. Just don't look at it. I guess you would probably drop the block. The Enderman would pick it up like they would. Like a, like a pick, uh, man would pick up a gold block. They would be going on ahead looking at your build, and then they'll go teleport to find materials around the land that they can find. If they can't find anything natural, they'll just build what they can build. Like, say, if there's a, tr a naturally grown tree, it has to be a naturally grown tree. It won't be a block that you place down. I hope there is a way you could, because they can still pick up blocks that you can place down, like sand and dirt, as we have seen multiple times, so it's just annoying. But they go on ahead, grab what they can, or you could probably put up a chest, because we wouldn't want to... If, if, <laughs> if this was going to be a vanilla feature... You wouldn't want them to just be able to build whatever they can build. You have to provide the material. So maybe you put a chest nearby. Like, I don't know how near it would have to be. Depend Maybe like next to the build. Next to your build that you're trying to copy. Then the Endermen go on ahead. Gra open the chest up. Grab the materials from said chest as much as they can. And then they will start building in the spot where the workplace block is. I guess, to make it easier, we'll just call the start block the one that you're trying to copy with the corner blocks. And that the start block. And then we'll call the workplace block the end point block. End block where the enderman goes to um, copy your build. And then they go on ahead and copy your build. Now, obviously, if it's one enderman working on it, it'll take a while, but this will happen on the background. And if they are in this state, they will not be able to despawn. Hell, we do have that one enderman that's trapped inside of that cave. If they were to ever add that feature, I would try to figure out a way to um, move it where it needs to move to. And just force it into slave labor. No, I mean, if you're basically going to be exploiting Endermen to try to build stuff for you, the most logical explanation most Minecraft players are going to do is trap an Enderman and then free it for a bit to try to get them to where they need to get to. 
and then go on ahead and have them build their shish. Let's be honest with ourselves here. Minecraft players are worse than the worst tyrants in the entirety of the world. If Minecraft were real life, oh boy. The amount of crimes and potential war crimes that all of us commit in Minecraft are extremely high. I don't know what kind of crimes my cat's committed. Definitely created a lot of crimes when it comes to um, environmental stuff. I mean, you've seen what we did to that one landscape to get a crap ton of dirt to build our freaking... our cliffside agricultural section. You, you've seen what we've built. We also just have chickens trapped inside of a small space to constantly give us eggs that we don't even use anymore. And, you know, it's not too far outside the realm of possibilities to have Endermen be able to build stuff for you that could be added into vanilla Minecraft. Because they just added in an auto-crafter. Can you believe it? An auto crafter. Now it's not like the most best auto crafter. Not like the auto crafter you would see in a modded game, you know, mind you. Although vanilla doesn't really have a whole lot in the way that really requires that level of auto crafting. But there is definitely a few things I can think of that would be very useful to have auto crafted. For instance, if you were to get a gold farm set up in the nether with a bunch of pigmen and just have them constantly get killed, you can use the auto crafter <coughs> to craft them into ingots, put it in, into a drop. You, you don't even need a dropper. It can just drop out normally. Although I feel like having it be put into a dropper would still be better so it keeps it relatively a healthy pace so not a lot of gold's being wasted. Because it's not good to have access waste. Plus, it would be a good way to try to, like, separate some excess gold and put them into their own chest. But it would be used to go on ahead and be placed into a dropper. To then be dropped into a one-by-one -one area. Here we go with the, the tyrannical suggestions again. Where we place a pigman on top of a hopper who's constantly being fed gold as he's letting out infinite resources. The infinite ender pearls and obsidian. It's incredible. Now, technically, you can already kind of do that. You technically don't really even need to have an auto crafter for a system like that. I guess the entire point here is just sit at the nether, just anger a bunch of pigmen, keep aggroing them as they go and automatically get themselves killed, and just sit there and don't even do anything. Just Gather a bunch of material. It basically just gives you extra materials by only needing to do one thing, which is fire a bow and arrow at a zombie pigman and just watch all of the gold flow in and all of the other materials that the pigmen spawn in, spawn in, or whatever. Or the pigmen somehow manage to pull out of his ass and give to you inside of your hopper system. Set up a simple auto-sorting system to get it all where it needs to go neatly. Expand upon the amount of storage you can have, because I feel like that's a good idea. If this is kind of system overflows, you want to make sure you have a bunch of it ready and ready to go. <clears throat> there we go. But yes, <clears throat> that's a really good example as to what you can do in the auto-crafting department. It can also be used to auto-craft a bunch of other stuff. Apparently they can give you iron. I'm not sure exactly. Because I was looking at a chart. Matter of fact, I think the chart's probably still noticeable. I'm going to look it up just because it does. <clears throat> uh, where would it be? Ah, here we go. Oh, they give you iron nuggets. Of course, that is um, not a guaranteed drop. They can give you iron nuggets to which you can create either chains with, of course, it, you know, two nuggets and an ingot, uh, or you can just make a whole bunch of other things. Like a bunch of tools, a lot of things that you don't really need. A blacksmithing table? Now, why on earth would I want to make one of those multiple times over? 
Shears, though, I could definitely see a very good use for, but that's not really where you would go to get a bunch of sh iron anyways. No, you would make an iron farm. And what your iron farm could be good for, outside of just crafting them into blocks and just sending it over to the spot where you get all of your iron, what would be good for it is to create a system that goes over to an automated bee farm where you will be able to make all of the things that you need when it comes to one thing. And one thing only. Wax. So if you're going to be building a crap ton with copper, but you don't want it to oxidize, a wax farm that constantly gets you all the wax you need is going to be important. You are going to have an auto crafter that will craft all the shears that you can get placed into your little, I think it was the dispenser, not the dropper, the dispenser, and then bing, bang, boom, you get a bunch of wax, either passively or not, I'm not sure. Obviously, you would have to build it in a place where you know you're going to be in the most part and I don't know how far it is. Like, I have the idea of having, like, a bridge be built across from my, um, lake where the drowned resides. You know, the drowned of the lake, right? Remember that guy? I know it's been a while, but surely you haven't forgotten about the drowned in the lake. He's still there. But my point here is that I would build a bridge there have an iron farm there close to home so that I know it has a better chance of constantly working. And then we get our hands on a crap ton of iron passively while we're just at home. Oh yeah, did you know that the armadillo won the mob vote? Looks like we're getting dog armor, which is great. Um, this vote, I don't really care too much about it. Take it either way. The increased reach would have been nice. The penguins, I guess, would have been nice, too, to make, like, an Arctic zoo exhibit. Like, like what, I, what I have planned for the sniffer at one point is to build, like, a prehistoric-looking area with giant eggs, I guess, where the, um, what do you call it, resides. And, um, well, you know... I was thinking maybe I could do the same thing with the uh, polar bears and the penguins and just build a... It wouldn't be enclosed, obviously, because the sniffer area I had in mind was going to be like a giant area. Maybe like a little lake, or not lake, uh, pond. Big pond. In between of a pond and a lake. I guess Minecraft lakes are pretty small, actually. So a lake. I guess. With like a, you know, curved... Giant walls that nothing can get in and out. Uh, three by three uh, block, uh, what it was called again, like airlock system, like what I've been using for the village. And just all the sniffers there with the exotic plants that I could ever want. Just right out there doing their thing. I was thinking about maybe doing something like that, similar to that, with the polar bears, and if the penguins were to have gotten added, the penguins, but uh, they, they have not been added. Will they be added at some point? Who knows? Do you consider me a monster for taking the penguins out of their, con their normal habitat, and then putting them into a different one with polar bears that probably would be aggressive towards them? I don't know exactly. Maybe they wouldn't. Who knows? Well, you gotta remember, I am a cat in this game. And we are destructive forces of nature. You can't blame the cat for being destructive, right? Even though I sure as hell can. But the cat won't care. But, yeah, no, the armadillo, I guess, is pretty good. We could probably, we could probably create a habitat for the armadillo in the deserts. Ooh, we could do something like that, similar to that, but near the mesa biome. They're in savannas, right? Yep, I do believe so. Well, regardless of the fact, that's great. If we ever get a bunch of dogs at some point, at the very least, when the time comes for us to destroy a wither, maybe with an army of dogs, we'll obviously 
are going to have to create a considerable armadillo shell system, because otherwise it'll be pointless if they just get offed off immediately. Well, no, um, it would be... It would be difficult, but I think it would probably be an objective we would slowly work towards once we get to the point where we think about going after the um, armadillo. <clears throat> or armadillo. And uh, the weather, Christ. But I have a plan in mind. The general will stay, still stay in his house planning, looking out the window, obviously. But we are also planning on getting a bunch of, like, cats to um, work in specific environments. Because we are cats. ROTC cats. Help our cats help other cats, basically. And right now, my general is just there. He's like a roommate that lives in the opposite side of the house, basically. Because, don't forget, I am a cat myself. The general isn't a pet. He is, but... Uh, a colleague who does its own thing. He doesn't need me there. I don't know what he does. He lives in the area where there's a disco party room and lava sheep who constantly frequents that area. <clears throat> so I guess he and lava sheep kind of just hang out a bit. While I'm just over here building an entire village that's probably not going to get the use that it deserves to get used because, uh, of what they plan on doing with the goddamn new villager update. I don't know if... I really hope that update doesn't go through because it, it nerfs the village. I mean, I like the idea of having the... Um, provided I can take a zombie villager from a, a biome, bring it over into a different biome, and when I cure it, it will still have the same swamp or savanna or whatever kind of uh, theme it has so I don't have to have an, a, a swamp in the village but aside from that it nerfs the books that you can get considerably I mean yeah like having a guaranteed way of getting certain books is nice not having to ship through sh several different things would be great but I don't like the nerf in Protection 4 going to Protection 3, Unbreaking 3 going to Unbreaking 2. Mending is just Mending, so that's... Unless they decide to add another Mending level, which I guess, regardless, get, an, get a Mending book. Mending 2. Because that's the only thing you probably get Mending 2 from Exploration, but... I feel like I'm kind of heavily discouraged to explore until after, like, certain... Because I am not going to leave my world for a different one. <laughs> I will probably... Because I, I have explored so much of my current world right now in, like, a five... Not 5,000 radius, 3,000, 2,000. If only I had, like, a way to look at a, a giant map of the world to see what I've explored. The only way I'd be able to get to any new contents, like the Trials or the Ancient Cities, or just the Ancient... What do you call it? The, the, the Skulk stuff, which I have not seen any at all. And funnily enough, the area beneath my uh, house, the cave that of which that we go down multiple times, you know, the big one, there was Skulk, all that stuff there. But because this is a world built before that, well, we don't, we didn't get that, which kind of sucks, I guess, because we don't get access to the sculpt centers. But you know, it is what it is. But in order for us to get to any of the new content, we would have to travel far and wide. And that's why I'm mostly just focusing on trying to build this village first and foremost, get trading and get good enchantments. But now I don't know anymore. At this point, it's just me building it so I can have... I mean, an, <clears throat> an emerald income would be good because they are buffing the, tr the wandering traders. It, it seems as though that they are buffing the wandering traders, which is good. I mean, they'll probably. I'm hoping that they keep the wandering trader buffs, but they abandon their current experiment because it's an experiment right now that they're trying out. 
I don't think it's being fully added in just yet, but we'll have to find out soon enough. I hope not. I really hope not. Because the only reason why I'm building this entire ginormous gangstrous place is to give me a, a an obstacle to pass in order for me to justify getting the overpowered enchantment system. I'm already so far into it, so there's no point in me just abandoning it. Abandoning it. I mean, at the very least, getting some kind of you know civilization built is another good motivation. But the major motivation was to just get the best enchantments I can get without having to rely on RNG, you know? And by utilizing an, an economy that I'm building up, trading with a bunch of villagers, getting all the emeralds I need to buy the books that I need, so on and so forth, that was the entire purpose of this village, and they are trying to make it moot and pointless. It's the same thing that they did with the uh, netherite, where now you have to go into a bastion. But at least that one I like, because it gives me a reason to have to go into them. I haven't found one yet, so my hope here is that I can get to it and not have too many issues trying to um, get to one that I didn't accidentally somehow spawn in and be like, well, where's the blueprint, man? God damn it, I must spawn this one in. Which I guess probably wouldn't be an issue if I have to travel far and wide. Been a while since I've actually traveled any farther into the nether. I went to where I needed to got, get to. I got what I needed to get. I feel like the only way I'm going to go and try to do something like that, go into a bastion, is after I've acquired maximum enchantments. I mean, I'll probably still try to get the netherite and all of the stuff that I need to be able to upgrade to the next one before I do that, just so I can make sure that that's like the last thing that we do. Because, let's be honest here, having the materials ready to go would be great. So that the Bastion's the last objective that we have to take on. Having mending gear and all that stuff to be able to do what we need to do, that's what we want. So that if my equipment runs low, we just go to our zombie tower that we barely use, and then we go on ahead and repair it. <clears throat> That's at least my objective when the time comes for us to get to that. <sighs> I mean, I guess I could still, if this enchantment nerve goes on, I guess I could still attempt to see if I can get a swamp villager. Zombie villager, at least. Lure him over to the village and then cure him from there. Obviously get a name tag first, name him, then we'll be able to go on ahead and do what we need to do. And I think at that point, then it would just be us trying to find more zombie villagers throughout the lands. That would mean I would have to set up a portal system leading to every single aspect of the world. Which I guess isn't entirely a bad idea. I'd have to make sure that the village, the zombie villager is named so he doesn't despawn. Push him into a minecart. And then get him to go down the rail system. For the most part, at least. It's pretty simple, right? That would just have the zombie follow us. <clears throat> I'm already coming up with plans when we don't even really fully know if this is going to happen or not. Part of me hope it doesn't. I mean, if it does happen, I hope that they keep the enchantments the same as they are. So it's not like Protection 3, but rather Protection 4. <clears throat> same thing with all the other stuff. If anything, make it like a chance of it being either, you know, 2 or 3. I don't know. <clears throat> Like, the randomized aspect, at least... Hmm, I have no clue. 
To me, it's personal because I'm building an entire village to justify me getting infinite mending books. Which, I guess, technically speaking, if all I gotta do is just move a, a zombie swamp villager over to the village and then cure him, I'll get my mending book. I mean, I was... It, it would have been a bonus to have, like, all of the, um other books at my disposal without having to worry too much about RNG and the tables. <clears throat> if they can buff the enchantment tables so it's not so goddamn randomized and terrible. Like, I feel like a uh, level 3 enchantment at 30, at maximum, should at the very least guarantee a significant amount of enchantments. <clears throat> Or if anything, allow us to like put in more expensive materials alongside lapis in order to at least ensure that we get a bunch. Hell, I would take putting in a certain material to get a certain enchantment. And putting in more of the same material will increase your chance of getting the maximum amount that you need. I don't know, maybe diamonds to get uh, protection for books or something? Leave it empty to get, like, the randomized stuff, but still make it be good. The, you know, the, the more you put in as well, the better chance you get of another thing at maximum or at the same level in terms of, like, say, maximum level. So, like, if you get protection four, you'd get unbreaking three. I mean, it's, a, it's an idea. If they want to introduce the, the nerfing of the villager trades, at the very least, buff the anvil and enchantment table system. Because the only reason people gravitate towards the villager enchantment system or in villager trading system for enchantment books is because it's a more guaranteed method to get what you want. Because obviously with netherite, at this point, it's no longer a case of, you know, getting the gear, having it for a little bit, and then having to replace it at some point because it becomes impossible to repair any further. We are now fully past that part, especially with netherite. Because there's no way in hell anybody's going to go into the nether to try to find something as rare as netherites. It doesn't help that there's not a lot of other materials in another that you can get. I mean, you got gold, you got quartz, but outside of those two, I mean, I guess good quartz is always great, but outside of those two, there isn't too many other reasons for you to go down into the depths of another to try to get anything other than netherite or quartz. Although I do like the idea of creating a netherite strip mine or nether strip mine, not just for netherites, but also for quartz. Because quartz is good building material, but you don't get a lot of it. Well, actually, let me check something real quick, because you probably could. Am I going to go to the... Yeah, I yeah. am. Let, let me go over here. <clears throat> what do you drop again? String, iron nuggets, leather, obsidian, nether bricks. Ah, so you do drop quartz. Ho, 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 ho. Might not be like a guaranteed drop, but hey, they drop quartz. So if I were to ever get a gold farm set up, which wouldn't be an XP farm. I mean, I technically could set it up as an XP farm if I really wanted to. Plus, with looting, I'd probably get a better chance of getting a bunch of other stuff. Oh, oh, also, I could... There's another thing that I haven't done, but this is something I could do. I can have an automated smelter system rolling. It would be so goddamn automated. It would be automated in a sense where you have a system that comp or that uh, takes the nuggets and auto crafts it into a, a gold ingot. If the gold ingot's already been acquired, it'll just be immediately dropped into the the, <laughs> the dispenser. But if you get a sword. You could just smelt that stuff. You could just plop that sword into a smelter. I don't know what kind of smelter. Like, I don't know if a blast furnace would be quick. 
it, it is a metal, technically speaking, but I don't recall ever having to actually smelt those before. But the idea here would be to just go on ahead, have a, an auto lava system, multiple buckets of lava, a dripstone dripping into a cauldron with lava on top. I think, I think a dispenser picks up and places down, or at least picks up lava, right? Like, if, it, if it's given a, a signal, it'll go on ahead, pick up the lava, and then the lava will be dispensed via, uh, you know, the filter system, to which it will then go on ahead, well, yeah, go on ahead, enter into the furnace, stay there, the swords will then get entered in, and once it's done, it'll take the bucket, the emptied bucket, bring it out in, well, I'm assuming that you could do, yeah, no, it does. We would have to then auto-sort the gold ingots, or the, yeah, the gold uh, nuggets, I meant, to be moved somewhere else while the buckets get moved back into the system. It would probably auto-sort the buckets instead, since I feel like having the gold end up where it needs to be is a much better idea. But I'll then go on ahead, <clears throat> move the bucket back into the hopper that goes down into the uh, dispenser, assuming that that works. Actually, I'm going to see something for a second. Minecraft dispenser cauldron does... Well, it can't fill it, but can it grab it? I'm not sure. Well, there is a how to fully AFK lava farm, which I think is probably going to say use a dispenser. Let me lower that to, so you can hear that. Are you using it? Is there a dispenser? I don't know. He has a, a hopper chest or something going in. I'm just trying to see if he has a dispenser being used. I see a whole bunch of cauldrons. And of course the lava farm system with the dripstone. I don't know. Oh, I am seeing a dispenser. Hold on, let me back up. Back up further. Back up. Yeah, I, I am seeing a dispenser. I believe that's a dispenser. I'll just skip ahead. Seems like it. I don't know how this is how this is working. And you fill it up with the lava, of course. You have your your mine cart there. Oh no, he's just doing it that way. Oh, <laughs> never mind. This is not. Well, this is from two years ago. Well, you're saying, why can't dispensers fill cauldrons? Can it grab it at least? That's why not, Wano. Can it grab it? That's my main question. Can it grab it? Why am I getting a fucking ad? This is why I use ad blocker. I'm going to just copy this link, go into my ad blocker extension. Don't know why we're doing this here of all places, but I am. I am. I'm doing it. There we go. Alright, skip ahead. Skip ahead. Alright, let's see. Yay. Interesting. It seems like it grabbed it. Hold on, let me back up. Oh, the bottles work. But does that mean the buckets don't work? No, he is... Oh, oh, it is. It is working. With a, a note block and an observer block, strangely enough. Wait, are you going to tell me that it don't... I have no clue. Oh, it grabbed it and it removed it. Unless this is a mod. Showing what you could do if dispensers could fill cauldrons and other dispensers could... Oh, never mind. Fuck. 
Damn you, Il Mango! Oh. All right, whatever. It's fine. If it does work at some point, then, you know, there's the idea. Of course, that is to say if that is the system that you want to do. Of course, if you want infinite smelting, you could probably just go on ahead and utilize a bamboo smelter farm system. Which, if it's big enough, it won't matter. I haven't built one yet. The fuck was that? I haven't built one yet. But, um, I might at some point. If it means being able to automate what I need to automate, then yeah. But I would like for that to be the ability to, to just stick with constant lava fuel. Because it feels more efficient, you know? Plus, it's only using one bucket. But then again, that was in 2022, so who knows? When was the lava dripstone stuff made again? No clue, but I don't think it matters, because the person who was making the AFK farm didn't use a dispenser. Anyways, this is a creature that has Coca-Cola blood. I'm just going to leave that right there. If you want to read more about the creatures here, you can just go over to the um, DeviantArt page with the descriptions of all of these things here and whatnot. Well, regardless, I do have some plans in mind for that. I don't know how many things we can auto-craft, though. You can get an auto-crafting system for a fireworks factory. Although, part of me wants to try to, like, stick to flying machine technology. I guess it's a good thing to have for AFK. Kind of. Plus, I like the idea of using slime machines to be able to go where I need to go. I am trying to go on ahead and do my own little progression system. <laughs> Right now, where we're at, we're trying to build a village so that we can then get the enchantments we need to fully max out our armor. After that, I think we're probably just going to go on ahead and maybe try to get a bastion. Like in the off-seasons, before we move on over to the next big project. We do some minor projects around the house. Try to get netherite armor, fully maxed out armor, basically. Then work towards... Um, Building the slime coliseum and finishing off the slime fast travel tunnel because that still isn't finished yet. That's annoying to just see or not, not even see, just to know it's not finished. I am probably gonna have to go back there at some point because I need to remove all those torches and get slime spawning again. <clears throat> All right, let's see. What else? I think I got everything on this side. Now we move over. How many is left? And there's this thing and that thing. Okay, I'll go for this little thing then. That's next. A lot of creatures in here. And I am going to duplicate some of them. Don't you worry. Once I shade them all in and once I've done the textures, I'm going to duplicate them. Not all of them, though. I feel like some of them will, are fine as is. But yeah, as I was saying, we're going ahead, get another ride, go on ahead, finish up the Slime Coliseum. Once the Slime Coliseum is built, we then move on over to getting the Flying Machine Tower built, where we then finally get elevators. And when we get elevators, we can outfit the Zombie Tower with an elevator. We can get Flying Machine elevators. We'll build our first elevator well, not elevator. Our first flying machine to fat, uh, fast travel point. The idea with this is to give us some ability to be able to move to where we need to move to. We're basically going to do slime machine R&D. I have one design in mind which has two flying machines running at once that will essentially have my head covered so that we don't get potential phantom attacks. So if we're ever, like, traveling for three days straight, 
And we could probably we could probably play like an inventory game, like I don't know, inventory checkers or some shit. Where we have like a four by nine board. I'm sure there's like a four by nine board we can do some kind of games while we just fly across the world, do something. Maybe make our own fun. Because we're just going to be sitting in a cockpit, a one by one cockpit, for who knows how long as we travel all the way across to new lands to get new stuff. <laughs> of course, this would mean we would have to just get like a, a bunch of map stuff planned out. Because we want to go somewhere that we know is going to lead us to something. So, I don't know if I'm planning on using a C to get me to where I need to get to. It kind of makes sense to do that. Like what I did to find the desert, because my god, it was a pain to find that desert. You have no clue how painful it was to try to find that damned desert. But yes, the desert... Trying to find other things. I'm sure there's multiple ways. Because we haven't really explored too much in... What was it? The north? Was that the north? I can't remember. Yeah, we haven't explored too much of the north. So if there's any place we decide to go and travel to, it has to be the north. And if I ever wanted to make a, a creeper farm, which I'm going to have to figure out because I don't know how that works technically. Logically speaking, I don't know how that works. <laughs> I know we need cats, and that's probably where most of our cat forces are going to go. You know, once we can get more cats to be able to create more cats and expand upon our empire, we'll go on ahead and utilize them to be able to work in designated factories and areas and whatnot. They got their own little homes. As opposed to every other creature that we have that lives in like a hole. Because obviously if we're going to have cats doing anything, they're going to just be sitting in a little home with a bed, a carpet, maybe like a sink, a food dish, which is going to be a, a plant pot, but it's going to act as a food dish essentially. The cat's going to be made. Plus, in this universe, the cats are, uh, you know, essentially just as sentient as the ROTC cat. It's like, with the ROTC cat's touch, the other cats are given the same somewhat intelligent appearance, and they go on ahead and take their roles. Because that's what most of the ROTC cats do. They play a role in whatever the hell they want to play it in. <clears throat> Right now, our general is just there as a means to just plan out the future. We don't really talk to our general as much because there's no war yet. War has not begun. I don't know if there will ever be a war. Could be. We definitely have a war against Endermen and their constant need to want to try to ruin my builds by placing dirt all over the place or removing dirt. I don't know if we lost any fish... Because of the dirt that the Endermen keep trying to move in that one spot where we have a bunch of fish in. I am hoping that that's not the case. Because having to go and get more fish is going to be annoying. I wish there was an easier way to get more fish to spawn. <clears throat> I also want to try to get my hands on some goddamn frogs. Would I put frogs inside of my river and lake? My river lake? Oh, I feel like I could definitely get frogs inside of my lake yard thingy. Anything aquatic I could put there, provided it doesn't murder it. The, the goddamn axolotls have to be put into their own little category. See, now, I don't know if frogs and axolotls attack each other. I hope they don't, because I feel like if I wanted to give the axolotls some more friends, I would give them frogs. If I were to try this technique, I would have to go on ahead and get frogs a breed, bring one frog in, and see if the frog gets myrtleized. If the frog gets myrtleized, well, I guess the axolotls just don't want any friends outside of their own. I 
I mean, that seems to be the case at least. I don't even know what other. I mean, I guess a dolphin. There's no way in hell I'm going to be able to somehow manage to get a dolphin all the way up in the mountains. First of all, the dolphin would not survive long enough for me to get them there. I mean, I guess, technically speaking, I probably could create some kind of system. It would have to be the most roundabout, backwards-ass system. And we would have to worry about the dolphin jumping out and dying in the snow and the mountain. Or fall damage. <clears throat> that only matters to the axolotl area, but I still think that they would probably get themselves killed even if they were in my river lake area. I don't think I'd have a big enough fence to be able to keep them from getting murked. Hmm. I mean, the other option would be to just build a water world where we just have turtles and dolphins reside. Where the hell would I build most of this? I at least have an idea on where I would want to build a prehistoric exhibit for the sniffer to reside in. But I don't know where I would build the other stuff. Well, actually, uh, I mean, I may, I, I'm thinking maybe I could have the dolphins reside within the lake of the village. Whenever it's time for us to, um, you know, fill up that area with wildlife and sea creatures. And turtles. Dolphins, turtles, fish. No axolotls, because apparently they are a danger to every sea creature, maybe. I know they're a danger to fish. We've learned that one the hard way. Thankfully, it was such a small amount of fish that it didn't really matter. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. Plans. But first, we have to get done with our uh, village. And then work on some other important projects. I really do want to try to work with the autocrafter at some point, though. I just don't know what I can use it for yet. <clears throat> I, I maybe I could create like a a miniature beef uh, wax factory or something. I could see two ways I can get this working almost immediately. Not with the stuff that we have currently. We are nowhere near that level yet. I was thinking maybe there was something... It uh, uh, don't matter. So, here's something that I have in mind. We have a significant amount of iron. No shears. Just a, a chest full of iron. And assuming that the crafter stops trying to craft stuff and it's maxed out. Which I hope it does. It goes on ahead, crafts the iron... That crafts the shears. And then plops it into the dispenser. To which then it'll go on ahead, shear the, <clears throat> the beehive. Grab the wax. I think the dispenser grabs the wax itself. Have a system in place where the wax ejects itself. into a hopper. Try to get it set up to where we only have one shear. Actually, how would that work? That is a good question. How would that work? Unless we had a comparator? Oh yeah, of course. We could use comparators to shut off like a hopper or something. Or a comparator to an and switch to prevent the autocrafter from con constantly crafting more shears. So it crafts the one shear. If it's one, you know, redstone active. Goes to an and, or a not gate, turns that off. The and gate won't work, but the clock will still do its thing. Well, actually, if it's on not gate, I think that would still work, right? If it was onto a knot gate, the comparator would turn it off, and then once the shear breaks and the wax leaves, knot gate turns on, 
and then it crafts another shear, plops the shear inside of the thing, and boom, Bob's your uncle. Of course, it's not completely automated. I mean, the shear making process is automated. It's just we still need to get a bunch of iron to be able to get all the shears that we need. We need to make sure that we have three bees enclosed in the area so that they will always grab what they need to grab. Enter back into the hive and do their thing. And then we just get a bunch of wax. I'd say the only purpose with uh, wax is to try to get our hands on a crap ton of copper that won't oxidize. Uh, how many more creatures are left? One, two, three, four. All right, I'll get the simpler ones done first. <laughs> That's a lot to think about, though. But, you know what? Having an infinite supply of wax to be able to make sure we can build with copper. Because they they got a new copper item being added called the grate. And I kind of like the way that looks. I like grates. It's good for a factory setting. Part of me wonders if there's any way I can have, like, even more sub basements Because right now, the only sub-basements we have, outside of our current, usual, normal basement, is the first sub-basement, which is lava farm stuff. And the second sub-basement, which is an extension to the lava farm. I guess technically the first basement is the lava holding chamber. Which allows us to basically just develop all the lava we need. And then the second sub-basement is the lava refinery chamber. At the very least, I can see ways for me to build out of the first sub-basement. If I wanted to make certain things. Granted, I think if I were to do any auto-crafting decorations, you know, like what we have in the, um, the redstone room. Because the redstone room is not only being used to store redstone stuff, but also showing the advancements we've made to get to where we're at. Like what we have with the 3x3 three three door that we have just up against a wall. And what we will do once we get a flying machine built. We got the basics of redstone down, and the advancements of redstone, although granted the advancements of redstone is complex and requires extensive thinking, which I might try to figure out the best ways, because I, I feel like the auto-crafting stuff for, if there was a way I can compact it, trying to figure out how to compact it, that would be great. Yeah, because we had to look up someone's tutorial, whose name I can't remember, but I said it in the episode when we were building it, to be able to figure out how the hell we would even build a 3x3. Three three. Like, I wouldn't even have known how to go about doing it. Any advanced block movements and certain, like, block redstone activation definitely requires some advanced tutorials. I could figure out how to build it, but it'll take ages for me to do so. And it won't even look efficient. We got a very efficient one. And we've even added upon it via, what was it, an XOR gate in order to give us an airlock system. Which is great for allowing us to get into the village without anything being able to like, break down a door and as well as let us bring our horse in. Because there's no way in hell I would travel that through that village on foot at least normally. If I'm traveling through the village and passing through, I'm going to use a horse. Plus, how the hell am I going to use a horse on the mountains anyways? Having a way to be able to go into the village with my horse, to be able to exit out into the world with my horse, is a real good idea. Because <clears throat> it at the very least gives me the ability to utilize that system constantly. Plus, also, just having a way where, you know, a giant gate actually looks like a giant gate. Of course, if we wanted it to be a giant gate, it would be a 5x5. Five five, but I like the 3x3 three three better. Because it's not like our gate is that big. 
I mean, it's big, but not 5x5 five five big. The room itself is pretty small, as you have to go through to get into where you need to get to. And of course, those chests we have will be removed soon, so it won't look as small as it does now. <laughs> oh, but God. <laughs> Once we're done building the village, trying to figure out where all of those materials need to go is going to be fun, let me tell you. Ooh, man, that's just going to suck. It's going to suck a lot. But hey, once that's done, we can organize all the chests we have currently, and we'll be golden. So, uh, we'll just have to deal with it for the next two seasons. I'm just wondering where we're going to be in Minecraft at that time. Because, <clears throat> well, we haven't explored much in the way of the updates involving the ancient cities as well as the, what do you call it, <clears throat> the cherry grove, the sniffers, all that stuff. So there's probably going to be still a lot more things that we're not going to be able to get our hands on for a long while. Which is good. Because if they add more, like, reasons to explore, then by the time I finally decide to leave my part of the land to go explore other lands, I will have a lot of things to do than just the ancient city, mangroves, cherry blossoms, and the soon-to-be trials that will be found on the ground. So hopefully... Hopefully a lot is made and it takes us a while to get out into the world. I would say it would probably be around like season 8 is where we're going to eventually get to the point where we finish up what we need to do. Whoops. 6 is going to consist of finishing up the rest of the building, getting the uh, house, the remaining houses built, the walls and gates built, some bridges, some basements, some lightning rods, all that stuff. Getting all that stuff built. And then the next season, Season 7, is going to consist mostly of us trying to get all the villagers, as well as stray cats and dogs and foxes and bees and other uh, fish as well. Some barn animals in the barn. Hoping that the, the foxes and the dogs can't just go after the animals. Also hoping that the animals will be kind of closed up to where the, the wolves <clears throat> won't be able to get to there. I think, I think regardless, we should theoretically be good, right? Should. No clue. I do wish we can put dogs in wander mode instead of just sit mode. Because the only way I'll be able to get dogs into the village is if I can find a pack of wolves, multiple of them, throughout some area where you can find wolves, and then lure them into the village. I think you can lead them, but I don't know. Is that the shading finally done? There's so many creatures here, it's just a lot of work. I think that's all the creatures. And some of them I will be copying and pasting, because that's the easiest and best way to be able to get all of them into where they need to go to. At least the taxa process isn't that bad, so this shouldn't take too long. I've been trying to figure out what other things you can do with an auto-crafting, at least in Vanilla's terms. Because I don't know how many things you can really, like, utilize with it. I know getting a gold farm set up to get all of the things that you need for the, uh, the pigmens is great. Hell, even having a system set up to automatically craft the quartz in the quartz blocks, so that's, like, one less step to have to worry about. <laughs> As well as, you know, the iron farm, compacting all of that, as well as, you know, automatic bee farm. Hell, you can even use it to get an automated, um, 
honey, I believe. How would that work exactly? You go on ahead, have a bunch of bottles, or at least four bottles. You don't need a bunch of bottles. You get four bottles that go on ahead. You have an auto sorter that grabs the uh, bottles from, whoops, from the, um, <coughs> what you call it? The dispenser, because I'm assuming that once it bottles it, it stays in the dispenser, right? Oh yeah, do you need this? Kind of. Then you go on ahead, move all of those bottles into the auto crafter. Once you've gotten the 4x4 four four space set up, because that's pretty just simple, just room, um, well, I, does it need a 4x4? Four four? I believe it does. All I need to do is just disable uh, the five slots and just have uh, two by two opened up. I don't know why I said four by four. Two by two. To which then you have your comparator to detect how many things are inside of there. And then it goes on ahead, activates it, crafts it. I think the bottles would get moved. That's the one thing I'm not sure. Like, we, I don't think I've seen an example yet with bottles, but I have to imagine the bottles would get moved inside of a chest, or maybe not a chest, but a hopper, alongside the honey. Then you have the hopper system take the bottles and cycle them back up to the dispenser, and then, boom, that just does its thing. I mean, it works, right? If you want to get a crap ton of honey blocks and a crap ton of, um... I mean, with the honey blocks, you can get that pretty easily, automatically, immediately. With the uh, the wax, you need to make sure that you always supply a decent amount of iron. So I mean, having an iron farm, giving you infinite iron, while having some of that access iron be moved over to a farm that will constantly get you a crap ton of wax until you max out that, and you gotta get another chest. I mean... How often do you, would you plan to build with copper, I wonder? And how often can you get copper enough to be able to build with it a crap ton? I mean... Um... Don't the drown drop copper now? I'm saying... You could probably create a drown farm and have a bunch of those guys get murked so that you can go on ahead and get your hands on a crap ton of copper that way. But that that one just seems like it would take way too long, and it's more of an AFK thing. And we're treating this like one of those SMP live series, minus live. Then I don't want to sit around an AFK while you guys watch me sit around an AFK. Although, if we were to AFK, we would probably set up, like, a, a, a game or some sorts. Like, a little mini-game. Like, what, the one that I was planning on doing with the zombie farm, but never got around to doing it. Which was basically just to build a chessboard. <clears throat> I just don't know how I would do it. I, I mean, I have an idea. But this would mean I would have to go out of my way, get a map, Build chest pieces on said map, and the map is, is big. It's like 128 by 129, I believe, right? <laughs> Unless I were to choose some random space somewhere in the world. I don't know, like the sky or something, above an ocean. And then we just... We build um, with a bunch of materials to be able to get what we need. Which is chest board looking pieces then we go on ahead download a chest app and we play against an ai i move the ai's pieces where it needs to be moved and i move my piece where it needs to be moved i mean we could also play against ourselves i don't know how well that would work <laughs> I guess I just have to try to play for the winning side on both. So when I'm playing on one side, I gotta take the mindset of, all right, I gotta win. And then when I go on the other side, I gotta take the mindset of, no, I gotta win. 
And I just don't think about what the other move is being played as as we go on ahead. Go on an endless battle and see what we can do. <laughs> oh, well, we just kill a bunch of zombies to get all the copper we could ever want. Drowned zombies, for the most part. I feel like copper mining is way more efficient, though. Honestly, if you find one of those giant copper deposits, you'll be set on copper for almost life. Depends on how much you're building. Depends on what you're building. I mean, I feel like if I were to make a second sub-basement, it would have to be copper built. Primarily because I feel like with copper, it makes it feel more like a laboratory, so to speak. A factory, I guess. <clears throat> or hell, we could probably just build a copper buildings of factories and whatnot. If I were to ever start to do a factory arc, where we just build a bunch of factories to get a bunch of materials for some reason or another. Like a bamboo farm to get infinite bamboo. It will probably be built close to home so that I have a, a way to get these things passively. But the idea is to build the factory, get a bunch of materials passively happening on in the background. I wonder if there's a way you can make a chunk loader that doesn't require the spawn chunk. Would I want to do that? <laughs> I don't know exactly. I like the idea of having a chunk loader to constantly have the factory work. So I can always make sure I have maximum amount of equipment of some form. <coughs> but uh, we'll see. If or when we get... It's not an if, it's a when we get to the factory arc. You stretching cat. When we get to the factory arc, I definitely want to use a bunch of copper. And if I can find more blocks that work perfectly for a factory build, you know damn well I'm going to do that. <clears throat> um, all in all, I feel like we've got something real good in the autocrafter system. Especially for when the factory arc begins. But I don't know what more else we could do. Unless there's like an auto cobblestone generator that allows it to automatically break it. Which, is there? I'm going to say, is there an auto cobblestone generator? Where not only does it make more cobblestone, but it breaks it for you? That would be nice. That would be nice. I don't know what you would need exactly for it. But just think about it. Oh, wait, you're not supposed to be five. You're, or ten, you're supposed to be five. Just think about it real quick. A cobblestone generator. With an auto-breaking block thing. Now, I don't know if a dispenser and a pickaxe would actually work that way, like, you know, a sheer wood on a, what do you call it? But I think that only works because it has some kind of NBT data or something. Like, you wouldn't even be able to really make, like, an auto miner with it. The only purpose it would have is for certain things that are going to constantly, like, do certain things. Unless... They were to make an auto block breaker that, when put at the base of the tree, will break the entire tree. And then maybe you can have a dispenser on a redstone clock. Oh, maybe not even a redstone clock, just put an observer. <clears throat> well, okay, you also got to keep in mind there, there are still limitations to how saplings do their thing. Unless the 
Block Breaker is beneath. Ooh, unless you can go on ahead and plant trees onto a Block Breaker. Then it goes on ahead, grows, breaks it, and if you if and then uses a sapling from the tree to, you know, do the thing. It breaks the entire tree. Now I know this might not seem vanilla. But actually, how would they make a system like that of vanilla? Cause they made the auto crafter, and it feels the most vanilla thing yet ever done seen. Fills up an entire slot from top left and all that stuff like it would, what do you call it? I would say the only other thing that's not vanilla there is the fact that the GUI, you can click on it and remove things, but eh. Who cares? I don't care about authentic vanilla experience like it is. It's Mahjong Vision, and that considers it vanilla. I'm just saying most people probably see it as the most vanilla thing we have. It doesn't feel like it's too modded. It feels like it's Mahjong's own creation, essentially. Which is why I'm trying to figure out what would be a good way to have like an, a block breaker that allows you to basically automate wood. That's the next objective. A, blo a block breaker that not only automates wood, all the types of wood, but cobblestone generators as well. Because, I'm going to be honest, it, this thing probably is going to have a GUI, and it probably isn't going to act... Well, unless... Hmm. No, it wouldn't work. Because I was thinking, maybe you can use, like, a... You probably could still use an auto miner, like, use a slime machine system that grabs all the blocks and then returns back to base... And then mines up all the blocks that the, the slime grabbed. And once it goes on ahead... Oh, there's lens. <clears throat> once it goes on ahead and mines all the blocks, which probably wouldn't take too long, a timer would, you know, activate as soon as the thing gets back. And then once everything is mined, which probably is going to mine pretty quickly, it'll send it back out there and it'll constantly bore into it. Auto-boring. Not to say there probably isn't already a thing like that. I'm sure there is... But having a more official auto borer seems like a really nice thing to have. Honestly, anything's possible at this point. Mahjong added auto crafting into Minecraft. The mob vote, you know, I would have preferred all the mobs to be added in. Would be great. But does auto crafter? Man, I'm, does it make up for that? I, I don't know. Some people would say no, and they want all the mobs added. But this update is looking to be a good one. I just hope that they do add all of those that lost at some point. Would be nice. <clears throat> I just uh, don't know if or when they will decide to do that. Because I do kind of like the idea of extended reach, if even if it's just breaking blocks. The idea of extended reach seems like a really good thing to have. And the fact that he uses a crab claw is pretty interesting. Ugh. Burps and whatnot. And hiccups, what the hell. Oh, wait, Ryan. You're probably wondering something. How the hell are these fire insects not burning these trees down? Well, I got a great answer for you. It's moist here. It's very moist. The fire crisps it a little bit. But the jungles are pretty moist. <clears throat> so don't worry about fire. It will warm you, though. But don't even worry about the fire. That's the one thing I feel like Minecraft should have, is like, in the jungles, fire doesn't burn the trees as badly because it's all moist. It makes it so that, you know, you don't have to worry about massive lag as an entire jungle gets burned to the ground. <clears throat> I feel like that would be nice, you know. 
Mẹ 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 Right there. And you're just gonna nudge my hand. Got a whack. <laughs> what else could you use for an autocrafter, I wonder? Outside of the obvious stuff involving iron, gold stuff that we have stated, and fireworks, what other use could the autocrafter have? I was thinking about potentially, uh, what do you call it, a system to get a bunch of hay bales, but the problem is, even if you could automate villagers farming wheat, I believe they craft the wheat into bread and then dump it. <laughs> the farmers do not dump the wheat They dump the bread. And I don't think we want bread now, do we? <clears throat> Especially if we're trying to go on ahead and get our hands on a bunch of hay bales for decoration purpose, really. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, if we can get our hands on... So, okay, okay let's go to the limb, idiot. If there was a way to break cobblestone automatically, if there was a way to do that, this is how I feel like it would be done to get a certain thing with the autocrafter used, of course. You go on ahead, have your auto-breaking system get the cobblestone, have your auto-bamboo farm to add fuel into the fire. Then you go on ahead, put all of it in the furnace, <laughs> the uh, the bamboo for the fuel, and the, oh my god, I just somehow, how the fuck did I blunk on what I was talking about? What were I talking about? Oh, cobblestone. And the cobblestone in the, the furnace, and it smelts it into stone. You go on ahead, take all that stone, plop it into the autocrafter, a 4x4, four four, have the comparator do its thing, craft it, you get stone bricks. Infinite stone bricks. Without really having to, like, do anything else. I guess technically you could already kind of do that by just having, you know, it smelt into stone and then you do it yourself. But, um, yeah. It would just be an extra step that gives you what you need. And what it would probably do is make sure that it always has, like, a, a backup so that we have leftover stone to use for building for whatever purpose we have. What are you doing, cat? Stop! Psst. The cat's scratching this already destroyed box. Freaking cat with all the shish that you keep tracking. What are you doing? Meow. I'm just gonna lick your chaps. I'm sure somebody probably already figured out a way to auto block or auto break cobblestone, but I want a legitimate way that doesn't involve uh, what you call it. Also, I'm gonna go on ahead and um, try to make this at least do this. I'll probably like put it at 30 or something. You can dupe sand, but I would like uh, to, to light. I would like a way to legitimately get sand, you know? A way to legitimately get sand automatically is what I, what I should say. You can legitimately, <laughs> legitimately get sand. You can't legitimately automate it. 
that doesn't involve breaking or the game in any way, shape, or form. I mean, they're adding more things in, so I guess we'll find out soon enough. You're done. Uh, who else on its side? Small. You. Mm, well. You're probably wondering what the hell this thing was resembling. It's uh, an insectoid slash mammal that basically is supposed to resemble a monkey in a sense. And trust me, the drawing form that I did it looks even weirder and not even sensible. I made it more sensible. It didn't have this part. It was more like a connected body part that connected this together and that together. I gave it a little carapace here. So this thing is definitely one of the more weirder ones. It's called the Coca Lane. This one I don't know. <clears throat> and its blood is Coca-Cola. The reptilians as well as titans utilize these creatures to be able to get some refreshing beverage. Using their stingers, they squirt bits of their blood at the creatures that are, you know, that sees their Coca-Cola blood as toxic. But obviously, Soda, sugar, all that stuff. The fact that this creature has a, a blood with literally the same texture, materials, taste, all of that. Ingredients of, of Coca-Cola. I don't know why this was what I thought of to have, for, for this creature to have. I didn't explain where you got the blood from. That doesn't involve killing it because the, the reptilians and the, um, the titans are, you know, do have these things as pets slash cows. They're stingers. They milk for Coca-Cola. <laughs> yes, sure. They milk their stingers for Coca-Cola. <clears throat> Considering how dangerous the lands here are, trying to get a nice cool drink of water is pretty difficult. But I would say the so probably would consist mostly of uh, an energy buff. The sweetness of the blood resembles that of a caffeinated high, allowing you to be able to trudge through these jungles. Oh, and this is just the lower floor. I said this before, but I didn't really go in, in too far into detail here. We're going to hold off on Minecraft for a bit while we talk about this. We should be talking about this more anyways. This is literally important to our own little canon. The, uh, the creature here, you see right here, the creatures in this part of the jungle, they, this is only a small part of the jungle. And we're not talking about the creature. We're talking about the, the region itself. This is the lower floor. There are multiple floors. It's like a branching area. I think there might be a temple, but I don't know if I'm planning on having it be in the same jungle portion. Because if you're wondering where this is, this is where it's at. This is where it's at, right here. We're in this portion on the jungle floor, which is down past these trees around this point here. And because of the way this jungle is, there is two day-night cycles. I already got you, right? What have I not gotten? Did I get everything? No, not you, I didn't get. And yes, this thing is big. I believe these guys are like seven, six to seven feet tall. So this thing being ginormous as well. It's a giant bat bird thing. I think it was called a Becker bat or something. This was not in the book. The reptilians, the coca lanes, whatever the hell this thing is, and these things are in the book. <clears throat> is that everything? I think that's everything. I got you, I got you, I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah, and these things are like, what, six to seven feet tall? They can consume you whole. This is two by two, I think. Well, I guess um, we might change that a bit. 
big enough, then they can wrap around you and then consume you. I don't think I got the snake. I did not get the snake. You know how many things there are in this damned jungle? Thankfully, I only had to copy and paste most of the plantation. I can't imagine having to draw all of these. Oop, that's not what I wanted. Bit by bit. <clears throat> but yeah. Day and night cycles, two by two. The daytime occurs when the sun rise would occur. Nighttime occurs once it gets to a certain point where the sun's above the tree line and all the thick trees up top prevents the, um, the light from getting through. And if the light does get through, it's just tiny bits and specks of light. And then once the sun's nearing the setting point, kind of the opposite of like the sunrise section, that's when the second day cycle begins. I think I got everything. It looks like I got everything, so I'm just going to say I got everything. Perfect. But we're not done yet. I am now in the process where we duplicate certain things. So you, for instance, I plan on duplicating. Do, 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 do. Is that everything? Good. Back or back? I mean, I could just... I don't want to capitalize the B. I want to let it be that. The B in the back, of course. What was this again? Oh, yeah, I'm back in this area. Oh, because of the whole... Right, I wanted to get, like, fog appearance and whatnot. Hmm. Yep, Becker bats. That's what they're called. Like, think of pecker, woodpecker, with a B, and have bat at the end of it. Rotate, smalls, boom. Like a, a little family of these things. Some of them are big, some of them are small. Got the big guys over here. I'll get another one up in here and put you over here. Now we'll go on ahead, make even smaller ones. Like a little family of some sorts. Are these things passive though? Can't say it was certain. All right, there's our Becker bats. If I need to get more, I'll just grab you and cut you. I don't think I need to get more. Now, in my book, I said that these things roam in packs of 12 to 15. I forgot what they were called. Let me check. If I can recognize a name here. Slumnerals, right. Got Syngiusts, the Reptilians, the Cocolane, and the Slumnerals, right? Yep, that is it. I didn't need to open it up, but I think having this here allows me to get to where I need to get to. Well, I'm not going to remember how to spell that, so let me just copy this right here. There we go. Uh, <clears throat> Slumnerals. And here they go, going down the tree, gonna eat that ass, consume your whole, like giant slug-like creatures that kind of just do their own thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me go to a different one so we don't constantly use the same thing. Whoops. <clears throat> Nine, ten... Eleven. They go and get this guy here. He don't realize he in danger. One, yeah, eleven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Put, put one here. That makes twelve. How do you go about like right here? Here we go. There's our slum rolls. I'm gonna go for the minimum of twelve, so we don't have too many here. <clears throat> And I'm going to try to get some of them shaded in, so there's like some kind of shaded shadows and whatnot. Yeah, what were these guys called again? Drogators? Let me, let me see. Yeah, drogators. Like drop gators. 
Gators that climb trees. Definitely a strange creature. And they are that big. They are pretty freaking huge. <clears throat> um, would I duplicate you? That's a good question. That's the water, you idiot. God damn it. That's the rock, you idiot. Yeah, okay, I think that's good. What were you guys called again? Ah, Kuru Kurokuda. It's like Burakuda, but Kurokuda. Don't know why. That's the name I chose. And that's currently choosing that name. And this thing just over here, swimming about in the back. <clears throat> I wonder if I could have you hidden in the kelp. Ooh, wait, idea, idea. What if I were to put you over here and have a friend of yours beneath you and behind the kelp? <clears throat> He's just behind the kelp getting ready to strike this poor creature. Yeah, okay, that works. This works. See if I could probably move you a little bit more over in maybe this direction. <clears throat> now be careful because that's out of water. Fish out of water. We don't want that. I was thinking maybe I can have another one of these just standing around, looking around. But I don't know. Um, Syngis, I don't know. Butterflies? I could definitely at least get a few of these scattered around the place. <clears throat> this is assuming you aren't going to give me an issue. What were you guys called again? No, um, Brabrel, I can't remember what you were. Oh, yeah, you were those little squirrel looking things on top. Oh, Trocal Flyers, I gotta definitely do more of. Kloshkito? Klokito? I don't know if that's what you were. Definitely weren't a lynx stork. That was the bird. Crokinteka. I don't remember what the fuck Crokinteka was. Oh, it was the frog. Of course, croak. Crack rock, I think, was the golem. Grot slither was a grot slither was a snake in the background. The drop gator, we know what that is. Dydropede is the centipede on that thing. Cocaine. Cloquito. Cloquito. Is that it? No, that's the fly up here. You're the Kokito. Oh, then that must mean you're the Chork or Chorkle Fly. Corkle C H yeah, C H R C H O R C L E Fly. Okay, let me grab the damn name. I can try to spell it off of memory. No, don't load it. We already have it loaded. I'm trying to create names that are complex for the sake of, you know, what you call it. No, 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 no. What are you doing? We'll have some over here on the thing. Man, there's just so many things here. Okay, at least I know you're the Cloquito. I guess I should have figured as much Cloquito with the Keto being the Mosquito part. Get over here, you abomination. Yes, that's right. More Mosquito creatures. What only makes sense, Mosquitoes can be found in the jungle. I have like a gaggle of them. They're giant. I mean, they are giant. If you see where, well, I, mean, I mean, it depends on where the hell they're at. These guys could just be closer to the screen right here. I guess I could probably just. Okay, fuck. I need to put you up. I need to put you above something. There are so many layers. If I do something like this again, where there are so many freaking layers, because I mean, yeah, the the 
Great Plains has a crap ton of layers, yes. The Desiccated Deserts had a crap ton of layers, yes. But both of them didn't have enough to a point where it was just a pain in the ass to try to place things all over the place. I, I think there was like some kind of limitations as to how far we went. Okay, so if you guys are close, that close, and then that means you are above this person here. The flies are just, or the mosquito flies are just around the place. It makes sense that there would be a decent amount of these things because, A, this is a jungle. There's probably a crap ton of them just, like, flying around. And, B, it's... It brings more liveliness to this place instead of just nothing. I can just have these flies all over the place, doing their thing. Hovering around, looking for stuff. Uh, I probably want some to be at least around some bush. Where the hell are you at? There's... Oh, I could have just went up... Wait. No, that's a troll fly. Where am I? We're good. Charcoal fly, cloquito, cloquito, or cloche keto. Depends on how you pronounce that. I guess it doesn't really matter. Cloche keto, I think, sounds better. But cloquito sounds. You know, honestly, I don't know what it sounds like. You figure out what it is. I should figure out pronunciations myself, but I'm, I'm not for some reason. Okay, I need to put you behind this. Where, uh, there are so many layers. I don't know if, you, I don't think you understand just how many layers we have here. Is that, is that good? Are we good? Okay, Jesus Christ, finally. I'll increase your size a little bit. Even though you do look a little blurry because, wait, maybe I could sharpen you a little. Just a little bit, because it doesn't really matter too much, because it, the background, there's just so much going on in it. But then I'd have to just try to like, move everything where it needs to be moved, and I don't want to do that. Um, I don't think I need any more of you giants. <clears throat> Uh, so many of these things here. An army of slug creatures. So many. I just want something simple. Do I want another one of you guys just sitting around somewhere? No clue, actually. Well, let me see here. We got one, two, three, four, five huts. One, two, three, four, five of these guys. I guess it kind of works. They work off of singulars. I got an idea, actually. Let me go on ahead. If I'm going to leave you here, I need to at least try to move you close to where this is. Where is this at? Jesus, that's so far down! Okay, hold on. Where are you? Wait, no. Oh, we don't have any more rosebuds up there. We have some here, and here. It's still so far down. Why is it so far? Okay, well, let's move ya. <clears throat> if only we can go faster. But you won't let me go faster. That's the same thing? Okay, good. And you bug out if I hold this down for too long. Well, you only do, do it once, and then after that, it's kind of fine. I'm going to do a quick save in case something stupid happens. Down we go. There's so many. I should have layered this. I should have layered these. I should have. I really should have. By the time we're done with this description and all, it's going to be 5 o'clock. Okay, does that seem better? 
Am I still able to get to the roses? Good, great. I'll probably put it here, though. Um, right there. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. All right, I don't know where that, whoops, I don't know where the hell the tree is, but it doesn't matter too much. Just get it close. No, that's not the right tree, but it's close enough. Get more butterflies up in here. Okay, good. I mean, actually, yeah, putting it, whoops, putting it by, I did not want that, I did not want that either. Putting it behind the this is good. Yeah, if it's something as simple as this, it's easy enough to not have to worry about its body being moved around too much. If it's something like you, you need to have different poses. The same with you and the same with you. Like a fish is a fish. What kind of poses is gonna do? Left hip out, right hip hip out. Slug. These things don't move like normal. They move like... The little limbs would move. You would move at least in a walking form. You're a literal fly. You're a snake, even though you, know, you need more positions than just that, at least. At least you can get away with this. You can't get away with this doing the same thing over here. Oh, wait, no, there are six of these guys. Well, that's fine regardless. And I do have another version of these butterflies, which I guess I could at least put a few more of them in here so it's not just the same old, same old. This is the chore fly. Yep. I have them all on co I'm not even bothering changing the names to 1B. I'm just doing 1A, copy 1 through something. There's just too much here. There's simply too much, and I have to move things again. I don't even know where the damn thing is for this. I don't. Look for Rosebud. Mushroom, spike body, flowers, mushrooms, uh, and Rosebud. Um, I'll have you beneath the cloche keto. Do I want to have another here? Well, that's a good question, because I do kind of like another one being here. Well, if we're going to be here, at least be in this direction and maybe have you on this one instead. Oh, but that means I'm going to have to copy this and move this all the way up. There's got to be an easier way to move this throughout the entirety of here. I can, like, scroll up. It won't let me scroll up. Well, up I go, I guess. Mushrooms, spikes, fangs, flowers, mushrooms, rocks, bulb. God dang it, get me back to this damn thing. Where are we? Where are we? Oh, no, here we are. Okay, we're fine. Everything is good. Um, reduce you a tiny bit. I'll have you go look in this direction. Ooh, I got an idea. Have little ones, little baby ones, that are gonna fly around here. Oh, good idea, me. That actually does look pretty good. Should I change some of their the hue up? Oh, good idea, me. Thanks, me. We're changing their hue. Okay, so 35 for the yellows. I guess 40 for the... I gotta do that. You know I gotta do that. I have to do that. I'll have another yellow here. Well, this is implying that one of these had an affair with a pink one. Does orange and yellow somehow mix in the pink? And I'm gonna look it up. Um, mix yellow with 
orange. What does that turn into? No, it turns into a bright yellow orange, of course. Where did this guy come from? Um, I think the mosquitoes would probably still say uh, the butterflies at least have. I mean, they, they would have different patterns too, but eh, it's fine for now. I'll keep you guys as your normal appearance. Um, ah, oh shit, what was it again? Negative forty. Yeah, negative forty. Oh, there's the secret lover over here. <laughs> Let's see. We'll have 70 for the green one. We'll have a 30 here. Why not? Well, actually, if we're planning on little babies just being around the place, can I do the... Okay, where are you at? Oh. Okay, that didn't do anything. I forgot we didn't accept. I mean, I guess it wouldn't help regardless. Let me just do that for you then. I'm glad I got into the habit of using alt more instead of just doing the normal one. Okay, and because I kind of already got you here, this one should be pretty easy. Got more babies over here, but... What was it? How did I get this? Negative 70? Yeah. But there's an, a normal orange one somewhere. You know, honestly, I feel like you probably should be something else, too. What, where, what did I do to get this again? Plus 40. So, 65? Is that what the yellow is? 40. No, that would be 25. And it doesn't matter. Having colorful butterflies throughout the area is a pretty good thing to have regardless. And have a flapping variance. These guys aren't flapping, but that's fine. You, my friend, are probably going to be more of a red one. Well, you, my hidden friend, will probably be a blue one. Yeah, about a good solid 150. Alright, I'll just type it in. Negative 150. Well, if we's going to go on ahead and have the babies, then we're going to go on ahead and have the babies. So I'm going to just take you, make whatever type I need here as our baseline. Same thing with you. Move you over. Um, I guess you guys will just be floating around the melons. Sure, you'll be melon butterflies. Um, I'll have you be 40. I think you were 35, actually, for the yellows. I uh, have another yellow over here. Negative 40. Rotate you. Go back to you. Move you up. I don't know. Negative 140. For the blue variation. <clears throat> You're above that. I'm going to have you... What direction? Ah, uh, this direction. Well, if we're going to do that, then let me at least make sure I have this variation ready where I go. 70 for the purple. Um... Rotate you, what is your type? How about a more white? Or negative 50? Negative 150? Or all the way? And have this be negative 70. A nice teal type. There we go. Alright, good, we got some more butterflies around the area. Really filling this place up with life. I say that's a good thing about cop uh, duplicating, copy and pasting these creatures. 
that we can fill in a hell of a lot more. And if they're simple, then it's very easy to do and not have to worry about it seeming out of place. Just see some flies up there doing their thing. I want to do more with these guys, the ones that have very specific poses. I would have to do uh, something with them. I can't really see anywhere else I can put you reasonably enough, so I guess this is it. It's getting pretty, pretty freaking late anyway, so. How long have we been at this? Two hours. Damn. Okay. All right, our next objective, which is probably going to suck trying to do. I need the mist or the fog or whatever the hell you want to call it. It's an overlay of, that's the plus, well, technically the equal key. I don't want too much. I want a little bit here in the outer, or the close areas. But then I want it to get more and more dense as it goes in further, so I can click the trees and use them as my means of figuring out where this all needs to go. Okay, so it seems like this is the color we're using. Not too much here, just enough to get some of these trees filled in around this portion here. And I want it to be too overbearing. Beneath the little thing here, but none up there. Now take me to five. Take me beneath five. Get another mist layer up in here. The idea here is to try to cover this up so I don't have to worry too much about doing that side as much. I'd say we're currently looking at the mezzanine patches during its first day cycle i.e. the sunrise cycle. Oh man, I kind of want to have a mist laying over these things here. Can I do that with this? Okay, good. Great. Because I do like the, the way that looks. <clears throat> Go beneath seven. I have even more mist laying over here. The idea is to try to cover up as much of this area as possible. I'm probably going to get some uh, dots up in here so that it looks like a bunch of faded foliage in the distance. So it doesn't like look just like a giant fog. There would be a massive amount of haze in an area where sunlight rarely hits it, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. While this is its own alien planet, it does kind of have to try to stick to some form of realism in terms of how everything looks, in terms of what it would look like. It, criteria isn't fully realistic in the sense that there is kind of a magical element aspect to it. An undead necro... Necro... Uh, what's the word? Necromancy, kind of, to it. Uh, where is the leaves? Here we go. There is that kind of feel to this entire area here. Right, I'm gonna just call this far trees. <clears throat> and reduce the spacing. Um, and put it at 10. I think 10 should work, right? Where are we? Where, well, first of all, where is all the fog occurring? Okay, maybe reduce the space a bit. Some green dots here to make it look as though there is some stuff in the background. I think it needs to not, well, at least re increase the count a bit. Is 4 a bit too much? No, it seems fine. Because it's 10, it's not lagging as much as it would normally. Besides, it's all foggy over here. You're probably not even going to even see these once we get the effects and shadows and the, all the other fogs set up in here. It's just here as a means to just fill in some blank space so it's not all just that. You can, you can see most of all just that. But... 
Once all the effects is placed in, you're not going to see anything. Definitely want some over here. Oh, I probably should put this above the rocks so that there's no rocks over it. Even though, again, you might not see it, I still want to make it so that it's hidden to some extent. Or I still want to make sure that it's somewhat decent looking. My god, does this look cool. I, I gotta say, this is probably one of my more favorite regions. Like... Comparing the criteria, or comparing the Great Plains here, which I do like, I do like the way all this looks. Plains, giant tree, wasps in distance, some birds flying around. These villages. And then to such a giant, open, vast area such as this, which looks just as cool. I like this one better. Just something about the jungle aspect all the different types of plants that I have made. I could have probably made more, but man, you, you need to make like several dozen different species to make that look at any anywhere close to maxed out. Did not want to do that, you fool. I don't even know if you could see that. I'm going to save this just in case I forgot to save this mezzanine patches. Yep. Actually, I could just check to see if you can see that. When I press F, what does it look like? Yeah, I'm gonna press F again. Was it look? I can't even go to the thing. Okay, never mind. Never mind. We're sticking to this because this is the way. This is how I've always done it. So I can zoom in and not have to worry about the the tool stuff being in the way here. That's why. I, well, technically, I have it further out than this. I don't. I mean, I guess I can understand why it sometimes does that. Do I want to? That is a good question. Can I move all of this out here? If I, yeah, actually, if I can move, up, okay, yeah, yeah, no, this, this makes sense. Why have I not done this yet? I have no clue. You can't see it, but I'm messing around with the inf, oh, the info has to stay like that for some reason. And the colors? You're trying to tell me I can't move the colors out, but the SWAT, okay, that's going to be annoying. I don't go to actions, I don't go to info. Not like it really matters that much. And layers and... Okay, so the colors are just going to be annoying. But the swatches stay what it needs to stay as. You know what? This is better. Because then I can easily move the, the camera where it needs to be and I won't have to worry about going into the view thing. And, you know, at least it... I thought that was a fly. I think that was just a, a hair. A little fur. Oh, this, this does feel a little bit weird with that being so far out, though. I'm sure I'll get used to it, but it's going to take some time. I mean, I can see all of the the um, the um layers, so it's, you know, that's, that's good. And I have the swatches out pretty far, so that's great. All right, here we go. The shadows now. You guys probably won't have shadows at least around you when your body is heated up like that. <sighs> oh, well, now that's an issue. I did find an issue. Uh, let me reduce these again. The issue being that the, the toolbar does expand a bit for some reason. So I guess here is fine. You can't see it. But again... Here should be fine. Because at least with this, it makes it so that um, if I zoom in, I know where I need to be. I think I might have just moved that away. Don't know why I did that. That's fine. It's fine. You don't need to see the, the small slither of pixels on the right side. You don't need to see the small, tiny bit of that strawble plant. Strawble plant? I can't remember what I called it. I called it something. Something I did call it. <clears throat> right now we're just focusing on trying to shadow certain instances here. The shadows here would definitely be a bit strange. I guess we're probably going to have a little bit of shadows here around where some of the trees are. So, like, okay, where, where would the light be? The light would probably be shining down here. 
I imagine the shadows are more prominent because the, the, the jungles is ginormous. So a lot of the things you're going to see are kind of going to be shrouded in a little bit of darkness. Even during the day cycle. The first day cycle and the second day cycle. It is definitely strange to think that there are... Because that would mean that the jungles technically have a much shorter time. If we're going by the subject of the sunrise and sunset being the day cycles of this particular area, then that would mean that the nighttime cycle, at least the first one, probably would be... Okay, it depends. So, like, maybe, like, here to here is where the first day cycle begins, then here to here, and the first night cycle, then here to here, and the um, second day cycle, and then all of that to finish up the rest of the rotation of the planet of Criteria, which means that the, night, the second night cycle is the longest. Now, again, Criteria is a, an alien planet, so the day-night cycles in general might be completely different. It is the largest planet in all the known worlds, and the most dangerous. So that would mean it's day and night cycle. It depends on how fast it rotates. <laughs> if it rotates pretty quickly, I still feel like it would take a little while to try to reach what it needs to reach. Because keep in mind, it, if a giant planet rotates at the same speed as Earth, a day would probably be like a month or something. Probably. If we're going by like a day-night cycle, a day would probably be a month. The days are extremely long and as well as the nights. To be honest with you, I don't know how long the days would last on Criteria. Probably very long. It would probably mean that the at least the bottom floor in the mezzanine the mezzanine jungles is probably closer to at least the day cycle of Earth. Maybe not entirely, because you also gotta take into consideration like, you know, how most of the lighting works. <laughs> I imagine when the sun rises you get like a nice bluish hue with the haze that goes alongside with it. <clears throat> Which I think is what we're doing here, because I I think a nice blue and teal haze with some green mixed in would be a nice color aesthetic to showcase this region. <clears throat> so, yeah, like... I don't think anybody would really want to live in an area like this when you have freaking this giant thing you probably scared. And these things that can climb, not aquatic, the reptilian that just climbs trees. Probably very dangerous, most likely very dangerous to you and me. The reptilians, it seems as though they use them as pets, just like how the Dehemus utilizes the, the lion creatures, whose name I can't remember, as pets and nuts. Which makes sense. I mean, having some kind of like mount that allows you to get around the deserts quicker and in a much safer mode of transportation and the only mode of transportation you have. It seems like something any creature would probably try to do, if only to give themselves some quicker way to get around such a dangerous reason. I mean, a desiccated desert has a crap ton of giant creatures, and we've only seen 15 of them. There's probably like hundreds more, and some larger than the, uh, the other ones. To say the least. Ah, drop gators. Almost as bad as a drop bear. Actually, honestly, what would be worse? A drop bear, which is just a rabbit, small koala bear, or a drop gator, who is the same size as a normal gator you would see inside of a, you know, water bayou, or whatever the hell gators usually reside in. 
Because those things are giant. And if they're able to climb trees, then they're probably able to run on land even faster than regular old gators. You probably could still do a zigzag tactic. I think. That's how you escaped gators, right? The zigzag tactic. You go right. They try to go right. You go left. They're like, what the hell? You go right. You go left. You go right. And the alligator just stops running towards you and is confused. And it's like, what? What the hell is this thing doing? What? Uh, is, I, I'm too high for this. And then it just walks back into the water as it gives up. Don't take my word on that. I don't think the gators do that. I don't know what the zigzag does exactly, but it does apparently help you from, you know, getting destroyed by a gator. Unless you can tame a gator. Some people have managed to tame gators. Like that one guy with a support gator. It would make sense that the lizard people would be able to befriend the gators. And no, the Dehemus aren't lions. I don't exactly know what I had in mind for the Dehemus. They're organic, but... Well, organic. Originally, I had them pegged as organic in the book. Before I started to use, like, humanoids and mammalian plantations and new system that I got in mind. Which I wonder what I plan on using once we get to the more magical thing. Well, we got animations and element or reanimates titans. I think they were called titans. Yeah, we got titans, which you would probably be called a titan. I mean, you are pretty big, considering the fact that these guys are like seven to nine feet tall. Yeah, this thing is freaking huge. Then it's probably like fifteen in meter talk. What would that be? Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. I remember, like around maybe four meters or something. Look, I don't, I don't know the mes how, uh, what. Okay, I how will be the best way to describe this. I don't know what like uh, five meters would be, let alone what would probably be like what twenty feet. Or, no. One, two, three, four, five. With the remainder is 16, 17 feet. Like, I don't... I can't measure that with my head. I, I don't know how, like, how big it would be. Even if I were to go on ahead and, like, say, Hey, two meters. I'm about two meters less around that point. So if we were to take four meters, that's four me... Or, no, two me with a little extra... I would be like right here. Like I, I wouldn't really be able to easily visualize that. You know what I mean? I don't even know how tall I am in meters. Last I checked, I was. I think I'm around like six foot, but it's been so long, and I don't even really fully remember. I don't remember. It's been too long, but I know I'm six foot. That much I am certain. Around that, maybe a tiny bit taller, but if anything, it's probably like. An inch. And that's just about it. I wonder how tall I'd be in centimeters, honey. I mean, the the height system of, you know, that kind of makes somewhat sense to us. Well, inches, centimeters. And it's like we use... We we steal your centimeters for our inches. I don't know why. You stole our centimeters? Yes, we did, sir. Yes, we did. We stole your centimeters. I'll screw. I'll sue you. Well, good luck with that, Broski. You're gonna have to sue the entirety of America. Yep. I don't really care what measurement system I use so long as I get... I don't even really use the measurement system as much when I'm freaking doing certain cooking things. And when I need to make macaroni, I do it. But if I'm, like, trying to, like, you know, reheat macaroni or something, I just pour in some milk, and good enough, and it's still good. It's still good. Pour in some milk, put in some extra cheddar bag cheese and stuff. Add in some more cheese. 
Yeah. Man, it's pretty dark. Well, it is supposed to be pretty dark. God, this is gonna take some getting used to. All of this as is. I don't. I don't know if I'm gonna stick to this. Honestly. Uh, you know what? No, I can't. It, it just feels too weird. I thought I was going to, but there's no way I'm getting used to that. No. I need a more... No. No, that's not, that's not either. That's not either. No, two green. Could work. What if I did a five instead? Just a small 10. I always go for 10, but I should try to go for, like, 5s or anything higher if I need more uh, things. Okay, um, now here comes the hard part. I'm trying to figure out where the, sh the fog should go. I think we should go beneath this. The fog should probably follow suit with the rest of everything else. And we probably should do it with a brush instead of a, a fill tool so that we can get the exact things that we need. Well, at least use a fill tool to figure out if this is what we want. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what we want. Oh, yeah. That's what we want. But I need to get a, a decent... Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yes. Silly little cow. You have all the milk, don't you? Mm-hmm. Funk applier back again. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's what I was saying. I thought I saw something else. It's just a strand of my hair that's just loose. Let's see here, twenty. Oh yeah, love that. Look at that mist. Mm. <clears throat> All right, good, great. I'm glad we found this. Fill in the rest. It makes me wonder if, I mean... Oh, but that looks good too. Both looks good. A tiny bit of a green hue. Or just all blue. Honestly, I like the blue better. I don't know if I could do a solid 10. I could, but I kind of like it being at 5 instead, so this is, like, more noticeable. I should do that more often. Have the fog only be, like, 5 or something. Right, Mumu? Just looking at me. Sun rays. And move your head up like that, Mumu. Oh, man. It's going to take me ages. I have a Saturday free, so I'm thinking maybe I can post this on a Saturday. No, no, I'll just sacrifice like an hour of sleep to get this done with. Or if not an hour of sleep, then maybe... I, I don't know. Uh, I do like the nice blue lighting that comes out of most of this. So obviously the sun rays would come more so at a very steep instance. So you like you'll probably have some sun rays coming down from here. The sun rays would not hit up top. Once the sun hits above the jungles, it will cut off. It will then become the first night cycle. And Darshi blows. That's essentially how the, at least the bottom portion of the jungle works. Now the middle portion, the one that like the branches section, where like a lot more of the creatures, a lot more of the dangerous creatures. I would say that the 
Mezzanine patches is the quote-unquote safer section of these jungles. These guys are pretty hostile. Same with this thing over here. I mean, they would only be hostile to us humans because they would think we were titans. Because, you know, the titans more so resemble us, obviously. And we got sand people, lizard people, and there's also, uh, I guess, quote-unquote, robot people. But I call them organics. Oh, wait, no, overlay. <clears throat> Get some sunlight happening in some areas, but not all of it. Like, I I mean, I guess a tiny slither of it here. It makes it seem like enough sunlight is somehow managing to, like, move through the trees a little bit to get at least some kind of lighting in here. Because if not, then I'd imagine that the, the more central area of these jungles are just pitch black all the time. I mean, the sun rises up, shines down on the jungle sides, lights up pretty much everything. The areas towards the edge of the jungles are obviously going to be brighter, while the areas in the center are going to be dimmer, but still enough sunlight will probably reach through all the trees and whatnot to be able to reach to them. I mean, I imagine that's how that would work, right? <clears throat> or the jungles are just perpetually dark in the center. But I do like the idea of the day, or the two day and night cycles. Where the days are equal, but the nights are long, and the second night cycle is longer. And depending on how long a day lasts in Criteria, and how long the sunrise and the sunset occurs, I guess it determines, like, you know... Maybe we as a human species probably would live in the mezzanine patches so our sleep cycles don't get completely messed up. But then again, the second night, or the, every other night being longer probably would still screw our sleep schedule up a bit. <laughs> I mean, the night's already pretty freaking long. With it being like almost 12 hours. Not exactly, probably not exactly 12. Some people might have like 11 hours. At least where I am right now, it's like 10 to 12. I don't really pay attention to that too much. But the nights do last a bit. I would imagine that the second night cycle probably would be like at least... Well, think about it. If this is where the night cycle begins, and that's like the sunset, or the sunrise, sunset, sunrise, sunset, or sun drops, and sun drops even further. And imagine if you were to... Uh, oh, yeah, it would be literally twice the time. So, if, say, the first night cycle, for example, is 12 hours, then the second night cycle will be 24 hours, and that... I don't know what that would be like. I'm sure some people live in a, a part of the world where it's perpetually dark depending on certain circumstances, right? Oh, but that would be so cool, though. Like, a perpetually dark city where it's constantly lit up at night, or at... <laughs> all the time. It's If the city is always in darkness, if it's always nighttime there, it's just bright lights all around. I mean, to me, that sounds cool. There's something calm and soothing about being in an area that's perpetually nighttime, but the, you know, the city's so lit up that it almost feels like it doesn't really matter. I imagine they'd have a system where once, like, normal nighttime would occur, if it would occur, they shut off the city lights, or city light power saving mode. There's still dim lights. It, they would probably switch to dim light mode. 
and then go on ahead and uh, do what it is that they need to do to be able to, you know, not completely inundate themselves with a massive electricity bill. Which I guess if the city is the one that's running it, they probably uh, don't have a bill. They probably just are like, all right, we need to figure out a way to generate more electricity. I, what the, I don't know how that would work. There's probably an infrastructure in mind that the city is able to run their own electricity. All right, what does this look like? Okay, you got some shadow rays and stuff all over the place. That's pretty good. All right, we... I don't... Like, this by itself looks fine enough. I technically don't even need to add any effects here, but I want to add more effects because I could definitely use some effects anyways. Yeah, the effects improve upon it even further. Like, even if it looks good without the effects, I still like having the effects there just because... Like purple area. <clears throat> An area that is perpetually moist. Making it so that the fire of these creatures don't cause any. I mean, if the nights are long, then I imagine that the, you know. Does nighttime make things more moist? Well, it makes it colder and it's probably like more condensation or something. I don't know. I, I just don't know. Right, I need a light orange area for the singest. Which, by the way, I didn't state this, but these things go up to a tree to then morph into a singioth. One of the creatures located in the middle portions of the jungle. Oh, I didn't even tell you about how the freaking top side of the jungle is. This jungle goes all the way past the stratosphere. I have a, an, a region that's called the Extreme Jungles. And what it is, is basically it goes past the atmosphere where there is no oxygen at all. And the creatures there are very dangerous and deadly. For the most part, it is an area that nobody, no normal person at least, would be able to get up there. It's impossible. And if you can get up there, you're probably going to need a suit to not suffocate. Or freeze to death. Like, I wouldn't say it probably exits the stratosphere entirely. At least it exits an area where oxygen is being held. That's a bit too dark. And that's a bit too blue. I got like a nice, oh yeah, that, like that, that works, I think. Kind of, seems a bit too much. Can I get an even lighter blue? Oh yeah, even lighter blue. Well, I don't know, I don't know how, I mean, having a lighter blue hit amongst the edge of the tree kind of works. <clears throat> but yeah, the extreme jungles is the top section. And it is not a fun place to be. Some very strange creatures. As a matter of fact, I am, I'm already wasting so much time. I might as well just go to my book and find one of the creatures. Is it before this? It might be before this. And that's the extreme regions, but that is also there. Yeah, there's an undead demonic mammal, which I don't know how exactly I would describe that. It would probably just be undead. But yeah, there's undead creatures in the extreme jungles. There's also a jungle temple with spiders. Also, I think the branch section probably would have more spider creatures residing in here. Notice how there's not a lot of spiders in this side of the jungle. You got some insects, little fish, reptiles. Wait, are you blue? Yeah, you're blue naturally. I'm Seems to be a bit too blue. Giant gators that can climb the trees, and golems, monkeys, or insect monkeys. That's a strange combination, but you know, that's, that's what Teenage Made thought of, and that's what we are recreating. Can I get a nice yellow tint in here, or is that too much? 
I could definitely see a nice yellow tint happening in some of the areas here, but not a lot. Too much, and it's too much. Yep. <clears throat> Give it lighting. All right, I think we can go into the sepia now. Oh, yeah, it looks good. Oh, can I get something on the bottom section? Oh, that also looks good. But I do like the nice, cool thing that this has. So we'll leave this area be bright. I think. Yeah, no. Leave, whoops. Leave the bottom area bright. See if I can maybe get a pink in here. No. Or a yellow? No, no, why, why change what's already looking good here? I think that's all there is to it. I can't think of anything else I could add in here that I need to add. I mean, I could probably think of a dozen things, but if I don't finish this off now, I'm never going to finish it this week. I'm just going to set all my tools back to where they are supposed to be. I mean, it looks good. I don't think I need to add anything more. I think we reached peak with this region. So with effects, without effects, with effects, without effects, so on and so forth. <sighs> now the lengthy process of trying to write up 15 freaking descriptions of creatures. I'm going to be tired as hell at the end of this, but that's fine. We got a lot of stuff done with. So with that being said, thank you all for watching today's episode of Art Time. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe for more, check out that there playlist, and of course, pshoom! Previous episode of Our Time right over here, and depending on when I post this, hopefully today, played up ROTC edition or Tales of Basari right over here. You'll know. Anyways, thank you all for watching, I'll see you all in the next episode. Later.